Hi guys, here we are again. Let's have a look at Affinity Photo on the PC this time. And we're looking at how to merge two images together with a transparent gradient, just like you see there, sometimes called double exposure. And there are a lot of, um, lot of uses for this. It's an Affinity Photo PC tutorial, in case anybody's asking. So let's begin. Create a new image base. Create a new project. Select the default 6x4 landscape template in the photo templates. This is a standard photo size and easy to work with. It's quite large on screen and is easy to work with. I've left this one with a transparent background, but that's up to you. Now, we need to load the first image, and you can see I've got Layers, Stock and Transform in the uh, right-hand side studios. I'm going to use a desert image from the Stock Studio. In fact, Pixabay. Just load Pixabay and type in Desert, and it'll come up with a whole range of desert images. Now, drag the one you want onto the screen and resize the image to be the same size as the template. Well, approximately. Don't squeeze in the corners. I'll show you how to do this in a moment. Select the anchor point of the Transform Studio and place the dot in the centre. It enlarges slightly but doesn't turn white. Now you can see the, the little square there with the square dots in it. Three in the top, three in the middle, three on the bottom. The centre one there, although it hasn't turned white, it is enlarged slightly and that tells you that the focus is on the centre. Now we know our image is six inches wide, so in this case just type in six inches, make sure the anchor is on and when you press enter the bottom, the horizontal, the height one will also change automatically. Set the lock between the width and the height to one. Otherwise it won't do, and you'll fiddle around, so you'll have to undo it. Now set the width to 6 inches and tap Enter. So it's a near fit to the canvas. It doesn't matter if it's a little outsized. Now this one, as it turns out, is a very neat fit, but others won't be. Now move the whole canvas so you can clearly see the boundaries. <coughs> you don't want the studios at the side overlapping and hiding bits of your work. So now we can locate our second image. Let's just use the stock studio again. <coughs> this time, finding a suitable image to merge with our first image. And in this case, we've got deserts and mosques, two things that come to mind. As you can see, it's much too big. So we reduce it the same way as before. Select the anchor point to center in the Transform Studio and reduce the size by locking and adjusting the height and width. Again, it doesn't matter if it's not exactly the right size. <coughs> now let's check the layers for confirmation. Got your layers panel open there and both images are showing and the mosque is the one at the top in this case. Now select the top image. Now we're going to set the transparency of this top layer. Select the gradient, <coughs> excuse me. Now select the gradient tool. In the toolbar at the top, set its type to linear. And you can see up the top there. You'll see the horizontal bar and the two control dots at each end. And the image will turn a default grey colour. It does that and there's no stopping it. When you select the Fill tool, make sure to start with the default. The image will automatically become a grey colour. The toolbar will also appear and you then need to set the type to Linear. Now select the left control dot. Draw the dot into the edge of the visible image. Draw the right side one in as well, so the left and right dots are actually on the image. Then go to the Color Wheel tool and set the transparency of the left hand dot to zero. You can see I've got it set to zero there. And you can see the image 
is now showing clearly through from the bottom. But we still have that grey colour. So your top image is gone, it's still that slightly grey colour. Now I know we can change this, and we'll do that right now. To start with, go to Layers and deselect the faded layer. Next, select the Color Picker eyedropper tool and in the desert picture, pick an appropriate desert color. Do not apply it, not yet, just leave it selected so you can see that the dot next to the Color Picker eyedropper is the color you selected. Now we can get creative. Enable the transparent layer again and select it. Make sure it's the one you've selected. Select the right side control dot, then tap the color picker control dot. Just tap it, that's all you need to do. The default gray will change to the selected color more in keeping with the other image. So you haven't got gray, you've got that desert orange color there, which is just what we want to complement the entire image. Notice the control position is halfway, and we can alter that. Well, I've already altered it slightly there, but you know that control position in the middle, it's, you, it's defaults right to the center. I've moved it to the right a little bit. In fact, it's up to you at this point how you set the transparency. So you can just have a little bit on the left or a whole lot on the left and no transparency on the right or the other way around if you so wish to control it or from top to bottom. You can move that transparency line any way you want. And in fact, if you change the type from linear to radial, you can have a completely different effect. So, thanks for watching. I hope you gained some ideas and insights for creating your own work in Affinity Photo. Please share the video with friends if you like the idea. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up in the likes, if you would, and even subscribe if you aren't already. I appreciate it very much.